is Red Green, and today's show, Harold does some music reviews, Bill tries duck hunting, and I make a satellite dish out of a patio umbrella. And now here's a man whose name is as colorful as his wardrobe, a real fashion plate with a side order of flannel, a man who always makes the it's best if he's dressed list. Here he is, the star of our show, Mr. Red Green. <laughs> Thank you for tuning us in. We have an exciting and enjoyable show, and we also have my nephew, Harold. <laughs> okay, and back to the enjoyable stuff. All right, Harold, let's get on with the show. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Tell them about the big boat race we're having. Tell them. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, we're having a big boat race, you know, across Possum Lake. And go on, and... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's about all there is, Harold. Let's get on with the show here. No! They're having a big boat race across Possum Lake, and the winner gets to be the ferry boat captain because the ferry boat captain is retiring, so he gets the new job, whoever wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell them why people want the job, though. Tell them that. Well, Harold, people like to be gainfully employed. <laughs> Not everybody wants your job. <laughs> no. Everybody wants to be in the race because every day the ferry boat, it goes over to Sunshine Island, and over there there's a nudist camp. <laughs> Nudists that are nude. <laughs> yes. They're sun worshippers, Harold. That's all we know. Oh, please, come on. They're naked nudists over there, Uncle Red. The old ferry boat captain only retired because he had a heart attack. He's 27. There's some kind of clue in there, I figure. <laughs> Well, everybody's just kind of guessing on this. You could sit out in a fishing boat outside that nudist camp and just pretend you were, I mean, the sun worshiper place, and you could pretend you were fishing and you could stare in there all day. I don't care how many times you peeked, you're not going to see one naked body. And apparently there is some kind of a road that goes in there where you can see them, but by golly, I've never been able to find it. I agree. It's totally disgusting, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Just saying. Well, then why did you bring it up, Harold? I didn't. Well, because the people at home want to know, and it would probably boost our ratings, you know. But I, in my own personal opinion, I think it is immoral and exploitive. But you don't mind making a buck off something that you think is a disgusting spectacle. Yo, babe, this is TV. That's the mark of a professional. <laughs> summer out behind the lodge downhill trick and slalom landing in the bog it's almost perfect skiing though it's 93 degrees it's always extremely slippery since the government declared geese an endangered species <laughs> this week on uh, handyman corner we're going to show you how to get better uh, TV reception. There's one way, it's just to switch to a different channel. But we're thinking more of one of them uh, fancy uh, satellite dish slash bowl things that lets you get uh, a million stations all carrying, you know, stuff like Cheers and Mash and Lucy and that kind of thing. And we were actually thinking of uh, buying ourselves a dish at the lodge, and we went down and looked at them, and uh, these things are $1,000, $1,000. That's what we pay for houses. <laughs> I took a close look at it, and I figured, golly, I could build one of those. So all you're going to need is uh, one of these uh, patio tables, including the umbrella, and about 160 bags of chips, potato <laughs> chips, that is. Make sure you get the kind in the foil bag. Step one, <clears throat> empty the bags. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe what we should do is just uh, maybe pour these into a into a pail, and then we can, you know, eat them later while we're watching TV. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that a little earlier. <laughs> maybe I should have cleaned the pail out first. Well, I'll just tell the guys these chips are sour cream and onion. <laughs> Forty-three, or is that forty-four? I'll do an extra. <laughs> oh, geez, that was my spleen. <laughs> that's, a, that's 100. Oh, that's good enough. Boy, this place is starting to smell like 
Mr. Potato Head's honeymoon suite. <laughs> All right, that'll give us a reflective surface for the satellite dish. Now we need the actual dish for him, and this is where the patio umbrella comes in. <laughs> All right, first step we gotta do is uh, to gently remove the umbrella from the stand. There we go. Now we gotta invert, flip her over, and <laughs> point her back out into space. I'll just aim her up through the hole in the lodge roof there. <laughs> and now we'll secure it on there using the handyman secret weapon duct tape. No problem. I guess you wouldn't want to give me a hand, eh, Harold? <laughs> Hands are all greasy from something. <laughs> okay, now I've, I've really laid uh, the duct tape in there because uh, you gotta allow for wind, especially after 44 bags of chips. <laughs> and uh, what we've got here now is uh, a, a concave uh, reflective surface, at least we will have once we add the foil bags to her. And what that does is it focuses all the electromagnetic waves from way out in space right up here into our into our receiver. Get that. There. <laughs> so, right there now. Now, what I have to do is I have to open up all the bags like this and attach them uh, inside the dish. And I could do I could do that with duct tape. It's gonna take a whack of duct tape, and that's gonna cost you a fair coin. So I got an idea that's free. You know uh, all of them paint cans you've been keeping in the garage or down the basement, you know, for years and years because they got a half inch of paint in them or something, and they're still good. So you don't throw them out, you just store them for a while until they smell like old fish, and then you throw them out. <laughs> well, you don't need to throw them out. We can use them here as an adhesive to stick the, uh, to stick the foil bags right onto the umbrella. <laughs> oh. 39. You know, I'm using the paint like wallpaper paste. I... Actually, I do have some wallpaper. Well, it doesn't matter. This is going to take a little bit longer than I thought, so why don't we just get on with the show, and when I get her all done, I'll bring you right back. Hook her up and make her, make her work. Well, that's 39. And now here's the part of the show where we expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point once again on the expert portion of the show is my Uncle Red and Mr. Dougie Franklin. Oh, dear experts, <laughs> there is a woman at our office who I find very interesting, and I would like very much to marry her and bear her children. <laughs> However, before making a lifelong commitment, I think we should meet first. So far, she doesn't even know that I'm alive. Any ideas? Well, I'm kind of with her on this one, Harold. I don't think the guy's alive either. <laughs> Uncle Red, I don't think sarcasm helps a shy person. Believe me. Well, Harold, with me, you either get sarcasm or total silence. She so got a uh, stock exhaust system? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to tell from this picture of him he sent. <laughs> I just uh, was wondering, maybe you might want to upgrade to a thrush, you know, or uh, get a little body work done, chop the front end down, jack the back end up a little, you know. Well, yeah, no, that's a good point. My mom had that done after she stopped having kids. Uh, Dougie's talking about the guy's car, uh, Harold. <laughs> Pardon me, but how would an engine rebuild get this fella closer to the girl of his dreams? Harold, your first rule, if you want to be noticed, is you got to make sure your car makes a lot of noise, you know? Big thunder exhaust system and peel some rubber out of the parking lot. <laughs> well, I would agree with you if this fellow wanted to meet, say, you know, a policewoman. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, maybe he, uh, he might want to drop a racing can in her and uh, get a holly carb, maybe some Mopar headers. Get that engine so she's just idling real rough and tough, you know, kind of like a. But 
For those of you who just tuned in, this is not the German version of the show. <laughs> it is autumn. The leaves are burning. But not from the maple. Not the leaves from the oak or the old sycamore. These are the leaves of the dining room table. Last time we have fondue in this house. <laughs> 99. Should be one more. I thought I had 100. <laughs> oh, well, I should do it. So there you are. You're, you're all tied right in now to the international uh, satellite system, part of the great video information network. Uh, you got a thousand channels at your fingertips. Uh, let's, uh, let's crank her up and see what we can pull in here. Oh, well, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Glenn Braxton had a major problem keeping the bugs off the front of his RV. Well, maybe you could put some kind of a wax or a Teflon coating on the front of there. Oh, I tried that last summer, right? I put lard all over the front of it, but <laughs> I thought they'd skip off it. Yeah. It attracted them. Oh, boy. Oh, man. And it really gummed up the windshield, you know. I had to replace the wipers every couple hours. Oh, boy. And then it got real hot. And it, they started to cook the bugs on there, and kids came running. They thought it was a chip wagon. <laughs> oh. Just once, I'd like to go to Florida, down and back, without a billion little bug parts all over the front. Well, uh, maybe you can back it all the way. <laughs> no, that's not bad. I need bigger mirrors, but no. Couldn't do it, right? No. So I'm going back. Yeah. All the toll booths would be on the wrong side. Oh, yeah. that was, I thought you were onto something there, right? That yeah. was close. Yeah. Well, then I was wondering if you could maybe tune up my uh, V8 Marine engine for me. Well, I, I don't think so. I'm off a bit. You know, you could do it yourself. I mean, just adjust the needle valve on the carb, it'd take 10 minutes. And you haven't got 10 minutes to spare, Glenn? Well, I'm awful busy here, Red, and the paperwork would be, I, you know. Plus, I got this bug thing on my mind, Red, and I, I don't think I could devote my full attention to you, you know, so it wouldn't be fair to you. <laughs> Man, how do you stay in business, Glenn? I'm the only marina on the lake, Red. <laughs> right. Well, things are getting uh, pretty competitive for this race across uh, Possum Lake. You know, it's kind of disappointing to see uh, the men trying so hard to beat each other, you know, as if they have any chance against my skiff. <laughs> Uncle Red, are you sure that you just don't want to sneak a peek at those naked sunbathers? No, doesn't interest me in the slightest, Harold. <laughs> well, I should hope not. Not at your age. <laughs> not really an age thing, Harold. <laughs> well, it should be. Well, it's not. <laughs> I have my reputation as lodge leader to think of, and uh, I have to win that race, even if it means, say, dropping a 427 supercharged Hemi into a 12-foot canoe. <laughs> I think, I think that's going to make the canoe rather hard to navigate, you know? <laughs> Having a 700-horsepower engine in there instead of a paddle, you know? <laughs> well, I don't have to steer, Harold. I got forward and reverse, straight over, straight back. <laughs> <laughs> You're certainly going to be more entertaining than those nudists. <laughs> sun worshippers, Harold, oh, sun worshippers. OK, OK. You, you have insurance, Uncle Red? Well, why would I need insurance? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> Do you have insurance, Harold? Yes, I do. That's very wise. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, oh, dear. <laughs> she had big brown eyes and a nice personality. Four great legs and an attractive hide. I remember how very, very sad we were on the day she died. Oh. But by golly, the burgers sure were good. <laughs> well, this week on Adventures with Bill, Bill told me to meet him up behind the lodge. He's going to try a little duck hunt. And, whoa, whoa, Bill. Bill does everything possibly wrong uh, with a gun there. But look at He's got one of the old uh, Davy Crockett raccoons. No, that's not the Davy Crockett style. That, 
By golly, that actually is a raccoon. Wow, Bill, 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 let that thing, let him go, let him go. Let him go. No, no, Bill, no, 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 no. Boy, duck hunting, Bill, duck. All right, he had brought his laundry hamper. Oh, no, no. Oh, I see, boy, Bill's got a lot of decoys. Wow, he must be just made of money. Anyway, uh, the idea he told me here is you spread the decoys out in some kind of a formation that ducks flying over from the air will see these and be attracted to them in some way, but I don't think high ducks is going to work all that well. <laughs> and then his plan was just to, not to me, I mean, aren't we a little sort of, okay, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we need to be in some sort of a duck blind, I was actually almost blind myself at this point, but, and don't worry any of you out there, don't worry about ducks or anything being shot, they're, they're real safe. <laughs> you see what I mean? The only people who are in danger when we go hunting is the two of us. <laughs> anyway, Bill brought some branches and, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, watch where you're back in there, Bill. And he's gonna build us a little, uh, a little blind. You know? I'm sorry, but that seems fair. And he's gonna build us a blind out of the brick. Oh, <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, anyway, we're going to build a blind up there so that we get some sort of cover. Yeah, that's how it works. Now we sit back down and just wait for the ducks to, to come by and, well, <laughs> not one of the better duck blinds uh, either. But anyway, Bill, we're not going to worry about that. Bill's got a the duck collar. Maybe that'll do it. You know, the little duck honker and thing. But <laughs> I'm not even going to speculate as to what that was. Uh, yeah, but here we go. Here's the duck collar. Here's the... Uh, oh no, oh no, that, no, there again, that would be a shotgun shell. Uh, well, third time lucky, right Bill? Yeah, oh this is, check it out, yeah, 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 oh the right end, all right, I see, okay, yeah, oh, he's all set. Gonna, oh, 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 you swap, Bill, you swallowed, I didn't realize they were, no, they don't work that way. Oh, oh yes they do, yeah, yeah, all right. and the ducks are starting to come in. Wow, well, now this is, this is, now I'm starting to have fun with this, man. You know, I don't, Actually, you know, wow, we're not getting anything, but boy, we're making a lot of noise. Uh, uh, another call, and suddenly I, I started enjoying duck hunting more than I thought I ever could. And now something for the young people that completely defies explanation. Here's Harold. Well, welcome to a brand new feature on the Red Green Show. It's going to be of interest to anyone who's under, you know, the age of 60. It's HTV, and I'm your MC, Harold, counting down video hits. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number 60, Squeeze the Beef by Moon Me Sideways. Number 59 is Debbie and the Deep Dishers with A River Runs Through Me. <laughs> Holding at 58, Choke on This by Meat Cleaver. It's a love song, isn't it? Oh, God, it's so God, it's 57. It's a brand new one. It's an air sickness bag, and it's called Be My Thermometer. <laughs> a lot of weddings using that song. It's a good one. And, of course, 56 is Wendy Vapid with Just Cuz. Oh, just Cuz. And then we, we got 55. Check it in. It's a good one, too. It's Life Sucks by Helsinki Jones and Lufa Lips. Yeah, you got to check that one out. And, of course, checking in at 54, Grunt by Groan. Oh. And checking out and 86th. It's Harold, and who cares? <laughs> I woke up in the park uh, last Sunday morning, and once I got the newspapers off me there, I couldn't help but notice uh, how many teenagers were down there throwing a ball around or, or hanging out or stripping cars or what have you. I thought to myself, why, why aren't these kids in church like I was at their age? You know, sitting, sitting in my Sunday school class in the circle there wearing them uh, gray flannel hand-me-downs watching Mrs. Pennington's false teeth defy gravity, along with the rest of her body. <laughs> I learned so many things there that the teens of today just aren't getting exposed to, like uh, how to pretend you're listening, how to sleep with your eyes open, how to make jokes with your hands, and how to sing hymn 435 while everybody else is doing 342. <laughs> but the teens today, they're just not getting in on that at all. I did that till I was 16 years old, and I never went back. But that's not the point. The young people today haven't earned the right not to go to church. <laughs> Well, we're all getting ready for the boat race here, so I thought I'd come out and uh, visit one of my best friends of all time, Buzz Sherwood. Buzz, how is my favorite pilot today? Hey, huh? hey, ah, man, ah, give me five. Ah, all right, all right. Oh, oh, well. oh my God. <laughs> let's, let's, hey, yeah, Harold, yeah, man, yeah, how are you? Yeah. No, come oh, here, come oh, here. Oh, I want oh. you. Oh, oh, oh. 
That's funny, Errol. That's funny. <laughs> so, Buzz, uh, how was your beautiful plane running today? Uh, not you too, man. Listen, I'm not taking anybody on any flights over that nudist camp. Just forget it, man. I never said anything about a nudist oh, camp. Oh, come on, man. I mean, like, none of the guys around here have seen a naked woman before. I mean, like, I, was I the only one at Woodstock? All day long, it's been, hey, Buzz, I want to go up and test my home video camera. Hey, Buzz, how low and slow can your plane fly? Hey, Buzz, I want to overcome my fear of heights and breaking my telephoto lens. Eh, no way, man. Forget it. Carol, I don't like the low angle shots. Get up. Look, look, I, I'm really sorry to bum you up, man, but right now, I got to get her ready for the big boat race. You know what I'm saying? You're entering your seaplane? No, I'm entering my airboat. <laughs> oh, no, no, Buzz, that, that thing does not qualify as a boat. This thing does not qualify as an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I was just gonna take my ferry out for a shakedown cruise and see if it's ship shape. Why don't you come along with me? You can be like the ensign or the purser or something. Well, uh, Come on, come on, step onto my bridge. Go on, go on, huh? This might be as close as I get in the love boat, huh? <laughs> you scare me sometimes, Red. All right, here we go. Yeah. Prepare to cast off. Yeah. All right, um, what do they do? Engines on one third. All right. Uh, come on, baby. Yeah. All right, we need a little uh, cruise music. Yeah. Oh, good one. <laughs> uh, all right, back down all hatches and portals. I uh, think they abandoned the ship, sir. Well, apparently they have. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry to say I didn't win the big boat race. Moose Thompson lucked out. I cannot believe that Moose Thompson beat that canoe of yours. The whole thing was rigged, Harold. I took his gas can and I poured about five pounds of sugar in there. And then just before the race, he cheated and switched cans with me. <laughs> I think I'm going to put in a grievance. Sure, is expensive. So, so what you're telling me then is like the Moose Thompson is the new ferry boat captain? Yeah, reported for work right after the race. <laughs> Boy, what's the pay situation? Uh, I believe it's fifteen dollars a trip plus expenses, but I think Moose would have paid twice that much <laughs> until he found out the sun worshippers really are sun worshippers. A bunch of old fat guys sitting around in robes chanting up at the sun. They're like Mayans or Aztecs or something. <laughs> well, there you go. I hope you learned a lesson. That's a lesson just for you. Shut up, Harold. <laughs> that's a lesson just for me. <laughs> oh, that's, there's the possum. Time for another meeting. Yeah, you, you go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll be down in a second. You know, I... I always like a show with a point to it, and I, I think the point here is mind your own business, and, and hopefully that hasn't been lost in anybody who's been watching, like, say, for example, my wife's parents. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And if my wife is watching, I'm going to be coming home the long way because I'm going to need some time to figure out how I got involved with this whole thing tonight, but I'm pretty sure I'd come up with a way of blaming Harold. <laughs> and everybody else, on behalf of uh, Harold and uh, the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, and, of course, myself, thanks for watching. And keep your stick on the ice. Senior citizens uh, are having a dance up the end of the lake on Saturday night. <laughs>